everyone, I'm Catherine Desinas Apelin and welcome to Book Dissect, where I take the best and worst of books and review it to help you be a better writer. This month I am reviewing The Perfume by Patrick Suskind, unless I completely butcher that because this is a German gentleman, so I probably did. Suskind? That's, I think that's how you would do it with like a Dutchy accent, and since Dutch and German are both Germanic, maybe that's how it's said. I don't know. Before we begin, let me warn you, this will have spoilers. I will ruin the plot. So if you're one of those people that cannot read a book without spoilers, then stop the video and don't watch this. You have been warned. If you're still here, let's ruin the book. You might remember that I reviewed Clan of the Cave Bears, which was a book recommended to me by Prince Charming, which I didn't read right away because his description of the book was, it's about a girl who learns how to talk with her hands. And I thought, that sounds really stupid. So I didn't read the book for a really long time. And this book falls into that same category of, it's a book that was recommended to me by Prince Charming. His description of it was, it's about a guy who can smell glass. And I thought, that sounds like a really stupid plot. I don't want to read this book. <sighs> head explode. I'm so sad that it took me so long to actually read this book because it's a good book. To give you a better review of what this book is about though, yes the guy can smell glass but it's this guy who is born with this amazing nose. He can smell not only normal scents that everybody can smell but things that for us normal folk do not have a scent like glass for example. But he goes on this mission to create the world's perfect perfume which leads him to you know murder people as it does like yeah and it's a really great book <laughs> i'm probably not selling it that well but i would highly recommend it because one of the reasons why i went back and reread this book is because it's a book that uses scent and typically when you're reading a book it heavily relies on sight and so I wanted to see how the author went about describing scent, since the whole book is about perfume and people smelling. And if you want to work on your sensory description, I'd highly recommend this book just for that. But we're gonna take a step back because I had a problem when I first started reading this book, and that was I thought it was the most boring book I'd ever read. And it blew my mind because I originally read this book like 10 years ago and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this really is like one of the top 10 books that I've read in my life. This is a book that I'd highly recommend to people to read because it's just, it's that great. So I couldn't understand why reading it now, 10 years later, why it was just like nosedive and it just sucked. Until I had a conversation with Prince Charming and his first question is, well, what language are you reading it in? I replied, English. And he said, oh, that's your problem. The English version sucks. You need to read it in French. And I thought to myself, I was like 99.9999999% sure that the first time I read this book, it was in English. You know, just for argument's sake, I went, I found the French version, I started reading it, and I was hooked like that. And that's when I remembered that the reason why I read this book was so that I could work on my French. There was a huge difference between the French version and the English version. And I know for, I think, the majority of the people who watch my videos, since half of my viewership come from America, then most likely you only speak one language. So, you're probably not going to be able to read both versions to understand my point of view. But I'm gonna break it down to help you guys be a better writer. Because one of the difference between English and French is that French has distinctive literary tenses that they use when they write. Now, French people will lie to you and say that, oh no, it's only for, you know, the classics and really old literature. They're lying and they're talking out of their butt because Twilight, yes, these are the French version, they're not classic literature, they're not old literature, but it uses the literary tenses, which is one of the reasons why I read the book. Because the literary tenses, man, like, 
The only way to get better at them is to read books that are written in those tenses because these tenses are not spoken. They literally exist to be written in because French. I think that's what makes writing so difficult in English because at least from my experience, most people don't seem to put that distinction between the way we speak and the way we write because it's not the same and what happens is people will write the way they speak and then your writing really sucks and it drags. But what made these two books interesting, at least for me, is that with the literary tenses in French, um, you have the passé interior and the simple past, and the simple past pretty much translates into the simple past in English, which for an example sentence, I have gone to the store would be an example of the past perfect because it has the extra verb to have in there. And then you have the simple, I went to the store. Now the English version uses the perfect tense. I have gone and the French doesn't. So this sentences are shorter, which makes the overall feeling of the book more snappy and it doesn't drag as much as the English version. That being said, the past perfect is normally used in books that have a historical setting or the setting is a fantasy world and using this tense does give it a more historical feel for reasons. I can't explain it and I will say that reading the English version it does sort of have this more historic feel to it but that historic feel isn't completely lost in the French version because instead of relying on a tense to get that historical feel across, you have to rely on the setting. And the settings are done so beautifully that I feel overall the French version is so much better because the sentence were more simplified and because of that the writing came off as snappier and to have the more historic feel you paid more attention to the description which helped you paint more vivid pictures in your mind about the place that you were reading about. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I think this is sort of an interesting conundrum on whether or not to use imperfect versus perfect, because at least for me, I think this is one of those questions is, who are you trying to sell the book to? And depending on who your audience is would depend on which tense you would want to use. And I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer to it, but I can say that having read the books in two different languages and having what would essentially be an imperfect tense version and a perfect tense version, that the simplified tense was the better choice in my opinion. I don't know, maybe you've somehow managed to read both the French and the English version and you could leave your comments below. But I would say for me personally, I always tend to lean towards the simplify your sentences and get your point across rather than like just blah, 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 because I don't think anybody likes really long description. If you do like really long description, like say hello in the comments because like I think you'd be an interesting person. Have you guys read this book? Because I love this book so much. And so if you're a fan, we, we should we should start a dialogue. Also, if you haven't read this book, like why not? This is a really good series. You know that because one, it was made into a movie and two, it's been made into a series by Netflix, I think. It, it, it's always Netflix, but I think it's a German series. So that involves subtitles, but I love that it's German because the, the author is German and I, I, I like things like that. But unlike the book, it takes place in the modern age. I haven't seen the series, but I really want to because the book is just awesome. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, and strangers on the internet because it helps me. Hit the red button to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, but hey, come back Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays because that's when I release new videos. All my social links have been left in the description below for your convenience. Check out my Amazon affiliate links because that helps support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tote scenes, may apple scenes. I always have things that happen to me and I think, oh, this will make a perfect story for the outro of my videos. And then I sit down, I do the video, and then once it's over, I'm sitting here thinking, I know I had stories, but I can't for the life of me remember any of them, which, you know, is awkward. 